Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let us come and be seated so we may begin our service. If I can get myself situated here. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the Bellevue Reformed Church on this. Palm Sunday, where we will celebrate uh, our faith together and hear uh, God's glorious and wondrous words. Are there any announcements to be made? Yes. Okay, here they come. Line up. And I'm sitting down. Morning, everyone. Today Morning. is Palm Sunday. I'm sure you all know that. Um, we've been getting these palms for the last couple of years. They are um, free trade. They also come from the rainforest, but they're meant to promote, I wanted to take this off the website, social justice, environmental stewardship, and also give back to the rainforest. So they look different, but they're awesome, and I recommend you put them in water when you get home and pick them up on your way out. Great, great. Just reminding you that this week we will have craft night at uh, Jacob's Well. So if you're into any kind of craft and you want to come and join us, 5 o'clock from 5 to 7 at Jacob's Well. We hope to see you there. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, update from the Pastoral Search Committee. The uh, Advertisement for the position has been live for a couple of weeks now. We're getting a trickle of interest in, and we're hopeful to be able to start doing some interviews coming up in the next couple of weeks. Very good. Very good. I hear footsteps. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, good morning. I just wanted to remind you, uh, because they no longer, the company that made the little boxes that we used to give out for for Maundy Thursday and, and Lent. That company went out of business, and so we were not able to get anything like that. So we're asking that you give any offering for that, um, which is for the Skeetsters in, in uh, Kenya. Uh, put your offering in an envelope. If it's got change, make sure you seal it well, and um, mark it that it's for the Lenten offering. And uh, then the people who count the money will know what to do with that. So thank you very much in advance for your gifts. Uh, the schemes through there depend on what we do uh, during April and Lent. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank the men of the church uh, who came this past week to clean up the grounds outside. Uh, I, I think that speaks very well for their love for this building and what it means and their love for you, for you occupy this building as a congregation. Uh, this afternoon, as you know, uh, at 2 o'clock, we're going to have the blessing of the animals. And um, uh, this is the first time here, I think, and uh, we're looking forward to having it and seeing how it develops and uh, next year. It may even go community-wide. And in the newspapers, uh, we've got some big dreams for this. So bring your dogs and your cats or your pitchers or your fish. Bring your cows, your lambs, your billy goats, whatever you got. Uh, and we will go to your place if you'd like. Um, we take this seriously, although we have a lot of fun with it. I'd like to thank also uh, the, the folks 
fellowship committee who's putting on for us after our Palm Sunday uh, service uh, a time of fellowship where we can have coffee, I imagine coffee, but juice and ref refreshments in general in the back of the church. Um, oh, I should announce also when we do uh, Blessing of the Animal, we're going to be singing a song uh, of which uh, he's not here right now, but I was going to ask Bill Nietzsche to lead us in this singing. Uh, I had this for him to give to him uh, because he's a quarterback of times of old and he's a leader. So I thought maybe he'd like to sing this for us. Oh. <laughs> All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. That's for this afternoon as well. Okay, any more announcements before we move into our service? I have one more announcement, actually. Uh, June Ransom tells me uh, earlier this morning that her son, Billy Joe Ransom, is very ill with double pneumonia and more. And um, she would like to request uh, from this faith community prayers for her son, Billy Joe. Yes. Say again. That's June Ransom's son. June. June sitting behind you. Okay. And of course, our prayers are ongoing. Uh, for uh, the people of the Ukraine, all of them, uh, and for this uh, savage, this savagery that's being perpetrated upon them to stop. Um, and we have one more that I will talk about later on. Now together we come to light the Christ candle, which signifies that we're going into a different stage of worship. I light this candle in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, give us a pure heart that we may see you, a humble heart that we may hear you, and a humble love that we may serve you a heart of faith that we might abide in thee now and forevermore. Accept our worship and may it edify each of our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The call that, to worship this morning is from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Our opening song is O Worship the King. <laughs> Children to stand. 
Good morning, and I need my friends in the front. Come on up, come on up. All right, we got some work to do this morning. Have any of you ever been to a parade? Kate's been to a parade. Parades? We haven't had parades in a couple years, so it might have been a while. Well, I was hoping that we could maybe have a parade here this morning. What do you think? A parade is a bunch of people who march along and they celebrate. And parades have music, and they have flags, and everyone is very excited and yelling and shouting and cheering. Does that sound like something we would want to do? Okay. All right, we're in it. Our praise today is our parade today is going to be a praise parade. All right? So I need everyone's help and we're going to need some music. We are going to need some music. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody's going to have a role in our parade. All right. We're going to try to do this quickly. All right, so you're going to kind of get what you get, right? We're going to get what we get. All right, okay, we're going to have some music. There's some music. You're going to have a tambourine to shake. Tambourine to shake. All right, we're going to have some sh shakers. Do you think you can shake that for me? All right, we're going to have some maracas. Okay, whoops. Needs a maraca. How are we doing, Samuel? Samuel, can you can you think you can handle a cowbell for me? Oh, a cowbell! You gotta hang your on your bell, and you're gonna you're just gonna tap it with that little thing. All right, all right, all right. Oh, how about some sleigh bells, Patrick? Sleigh bells. Okay, okay. Kate, Kate, Kate's gonna be a. Uh, all right, Kate. Okay, Kate, all right. Okay, church might be a little long today. Okay, all right, we are gonna do a quick parade. Everybody ready, stand up. 
stand up. And in our praise parade, we're going to say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Follow me, follow me. It's a parade. Follow me, follow me. All right, Kate, keep everyone in order. Hosanna, give me a holler. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Here we go, here we go. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Give it a shake, Ella. Come on, Ella. You got it, you got it. Whew. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Whew. The church just got a little bigger. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Woo-hoo! Oh, we made it. We made it. Come on, Ella. Come on, Ella. Woo! Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. Oh, whew. Oh, wow. Parades are tiring. All right. All right. Okay. Oh, wow. I don't know. I think that was fun. Do you guys like a parade? How was it? Did you like our praise parade? Oh, okay. There is, there is a method to my madness here. Okay. Parades are super, super fun. Uh, there was a really big celebration. All right, hold your... Hold your instruments for just a minute, I'll, and I'm going to give you. I'll give you a signal when we can give another give another round. Okay, we're ready. We're going to we'll hold it still for just a minute, Colton. Okay. There was a big parade that took place in the city of Jerusalem about 2,000 years ago. Jesus and his followers were traveling in the city of Jerusalem, and the city was having a big party called Passover. It lasted a week. A party that lasted a week. Woo! Oh, I wish my birthday party lasted that long. The people were traveling, and they came to a place called the Mount of Olives. They stopped there, and Jesus gave his disciples some special instructions. They said, go to the village, and when you enter it, you're going to see a young donkey that's never been ridden before. All right, hang in there with me. And then when someone asks you, why are you taking my donkey, I want you to say, the Lord needs it. Okay, so here they went. The disciples went, they found the donkey, and sure enough, when they untied it, the owner said, why are you taking my donkey? And what did the people say? The Lord needs it. Okay, and he let them take the donkey. They took it to Jesus, and um, they put all their coats on the donkey's back so he would have a nice place to sit. Because word spread fast that Jesus was someone very special. He had done some miracles, so they wanted to take care of their Jesus. The loud crowd gathered, and they cut branches from the palm trees, and they waved them and began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Does that sound like our parade? Yeah, the people were shouting. It was quite a time of cheering. And everyone was so excited. But you know what? They really didn't know who Jesus was. They thought that he was going to do great things in their earthly kingdom. But they didn't understand that his kingdom was really heaven. The people who were shouting Hosanna soon would be shouting crucify him because he wasn't the king that they wanted. But the good news today is that Jesus is king. He is king of kings and lord of lords. And we shout Hosanna. Give me a, give me a shimmy. Shout your instruments. Shout your instruments. Woohoo! Nice. Great job, guys. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father, our voices join with the voices of the people in Jerusalem some 2,000 years ago. Hosanna, blessed is he who came in the name of the Lord. He is our hope and our Savior. In his name we pray. Thank you so much, guys. Let's put our instruments back in the bag, and then we'll go to class. Thank you, Sharon. Well done. Well done. Stand here now before you at the communion table with a prayer blanket created uh, in part by Linda Rademacher. 
which is here. And it's for Chuck. And there will be tying of this in the Emmaus room following uh, the service and the fellowship hour. It'll be in the Emmaus room to tie the ends. But it's for Chuck. And we're delighted to have Chuck here with us this morning. Chuck had a kind of challenging week this week. And we decide, we're, we're very happy uh, to see you. Let's have a, let's have a prayer over over this. Our Father in heaven, we lay our hands and our hearts upon this prayer shawl, prayer blanket, that whenever it's put on, uh, the individual, in this case Chuck, feels your presence all the more. There comes a unity, a sense of oneness that you're there, embracing him, holding him tight. Give him courage and determination. Give him a song in his heart and confidence that he can trust you. In Christ's name we would pray. Amen. Amen. We're also happy uh, that Helen Barkley is back with us. She's, she's here somewhere. She's there. And uh, we're delighted she's been ill, and now she's here with us this morning. And I probably overlooked somebody. Uh, let's join together in our acknowledgement that we are not always the people that we say we are or that we want to be. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Please pray aloud with me. O Lord of all encounter, forgive us for being spectators. We watch the passing parade by hiding in the crowd. We would rather escape the costs of reaching out, of standing up, of being singled out, we say our hosannas and watch the city die. We wave our palm branches and go on our way. O oh God of the lowly, teach us how to feel with others. Let us share in the hurt and the hunger of the street. Help us to turn our apathy into creative care. Renew within us the experience of grace and the reality of your mercy. Through Jesus Amen. Hear these words. Be attentive to good news. You can do nothing to be made acceptable to God. Perfect performance is worthless. You already are completely loved by the Lord. Your iniquities are forgiven. Your sin is pardoned. Separation is no more. Grace is yours is ours. Praise be to God. Our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and sing our glory, our thanksgiving for the grace that God has put upon us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning it is now and ever shall be world without bond Amen Amen Please be seated We are pausing in our service, in the order of our service, to give thanks to God for, our, for the opportunity to give of the blessings that he has given us. 
of our financial means, of our physical and mental capacity to give, to help. We acknowledge this. In the back of the church, you see offering plates, as you know, and they are there for you to place your offering either at the beginning of the service or at the end of the service or whenever you'd like to. But let these words ring in your mind as you think and perform your offering. In Psalm, Psalm 1, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law they meditate day and night. Happy are those who follow the Lord. Please pray with me. Now, Father in heaven, it's very difficult at times to follow you. It's very challenging, and sometimes it's confusing. But our heart is the same. It seeks with purity of heart to follow you. Our heart breaks when clearly who you are and what you are all about is not followed. And many are hurt because of it. So Father, let us never waver from our commitment to stand up to wrong and to be courageous in doing so. Thank you that we have a community to worship you with and the financial means, whatever the level, to give so that others might have. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. And this all comes out of a desire to love God with our heart and our mind and our soul. And to love our neighbor, no matter who our neighbor is, as much as we love ourselves. And these two commandments depend on the law and the prophets. Amen. Our scripture this morning is going to be found in Luke. <coughs> Luke chapter 19, beginning to read it, verse 28. We're going to hear about another parade very similar to the one we saw just a few moments ago. For this is Palm Sunday. Hear the word of the Lord. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come to Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter, if you will you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden before. Small donkey. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say to them, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as it had been told them. And they were, as they were untying the coat, its owner asked them, why are you untying the coat? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloak, cloaks on the coat, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God. 
joyfully, joyfully, with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to them, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. His answer, I tell you solemnly, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. And as he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace. If only you recognized it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Can you imagine it in your mind? I, <laughs> Jesus, coming now to Jerusalem to partake in the Passover, as he had done, I'm thinking, a number of times before. He knew his way around quite well. And as he came, he came through Jericho, and Zacchaeus was in the tree, and he told him to come down. And he was going to have dinner with him, and, 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 and he did. And as the crowd saw this, and they wondered and scratched their head, how can this, this holy man have, have a meal with this, this criminal? Because, you know, Zacchaeus was uh, a tax collector, and tax collectors were known to charge way over what the actual tax was to the person. They had that privilege. But they did not disperse. And so when Jesus began his trek again, those people followed. And others came along. And Jesus taught along the way. And the crowds now began longer and wider more people came. Jesus, the Messiah, was going to the Passover, and they all wanted to be near him as he went. And as he came down the Mount of Olives now, on top of this little donkey, that had the cloaks of his disciples over its back and cloaks like this robe I have on something similar laid on the path before the donkey so the donkey never touched earth because the Messiah was on its back and palm branches going up and down hailing the Messiah the people broke into magnificent joy of song and cheering for what they had seen this person, Jesus of Nazareth, do. The miracles that he performed. They were overjoyed. And how is it then as Jesus came over that hill and down and he could look and see Jerusalem perform from the hill how is it then, with all the cheers and the palm branches waving and the excitement of the crowd that even when Pharisees, who were a part of the crowd, interesting to note, said, keep your people quiet. Jesus said, I can't. And yet at that moment when he saw Jerusalem, he wept. He cried. Doesn't seem to make sense, does it? 
Is this a celebration? Or what? Why would he weep? He should be happy. Very happy. But he weeps. He weeps. Palm Sunday is not a Sunday of joy and celebration. As much as we want to in a wonderful church, I mean that in general, want to celebrate as a Sunday of waving palms and the Messiah is coming. It's not joyous at all. It's a very sad day. For you see, two things were going on here. One is that the people that were following Christ, his disciples, beyond, on the one hand, they were joyous at what they saw God performed through this man. There is a God. He lives. He does miraculous things through this other human being that we call Jesus or our Messiah. And it's because God is doing magnificent things through Jesus. Here is our leader to overthrow Rome, to get out from under the bondage of Rome. That's not what Jesus was about. He was not about a savior of a nation. He was about a savior of humanity. They missed that. They missed that. And so, what they expected is another Judas excuse me, Simon Maccabee. Simon Maccabee, about 150 years before, rose up among the Israelites and helped motivate them to finally throw out a nation that had come to dominate them. The Syrians moved in at one time and took over the country and wanted to make it an extension of themselves to bring Greek thought, Greek ways, Greek religions into this area called Israel. So they took over the temple. They desecrated the temple. They put their own gods in the temple, Zeus, put uh, the flesh of pigs on the altar, which you would know is uh, anathema, it's promoting, no. And brothels in the courtyard. And Simon Maccabean came, drove them out, liberated Israel, cleansed the temple, repurified it, reconsecrated it. To this day, they have the Feast of Dedication in remembrance of what he did. And here is this Jesus coming, our Messiah, our Savior from the Romans. And he wept. If only you knew today. If only you knew. But they were not prepared to see. They were too busy thinking about their own needs and how God could help them meet their own needs. It becomes a trail of tears. A trail of tears. They could not grasp that it was what it was in Jesus' words that their salvation was to be. You know, these are the very same people who it is written in Scripture 
They hung on his every word. You remember that? Reading that and hearing it? They hung on his every word. And yet a week later, they were saying, crucify him. Give us Barabbas. Crucify him. Yet a week before, they hung on his every word. So caught up in the message that he was given, but it never entered their hearts and changed their hearts. It did not renew a right spirit within their hearts. It was like the message that they were enthralled with. You know, how very nice. Yes, it's of God. Now let's go and do what we feel. God's on our side. <laughs> God's on our side. And so we must ask the question. We must ask the question today, right now, this hour. Are we any different? Really? Are we any different from these, praise God, hallelujah, wave the palm branch, and then don't live out of his word and how we treat each other and speak to each other? Are we the ones who hang on his every word but really, our hearts are not changed. Our hearts have not changed. When Jesus looks upon our heart, does he weep? Saying about us, if only we knew what made for peace. If only we could take his word, God's word, and make it our life to live into and out of. And it's no easy thing to say, love your enemies, when we see our enemies do dastardly things that are unspeakable. How do you go about doing that? I don't have an answer for you. But we are called to do that. And loving doesn't mean turning a cold eye to what we see. Indeed, loving may mean just like with Christ. You give your life up for that which is right. But we must ask, and you must ask yourself today, are we like the people, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, come save us. And Jesus is not riding a military stallion as an emperor would or a military leader would down that road into Jerusalem. He's riding on a donkey, a colt. That's a young donkey, never been ridden before which is a symbol in their country at that time of peace. Not war, peace. We're never so blind when our will, our determination makes us unable to see God's work and God's will. How often have we prayed to God in our prayers, Lord, change this, you must change this, you must change this, you must change this, you must change this, and it doesn't change, but we keep praying the same prayer. And by being so much glued into that prayer, we fail to see where God is acting because we expect him and want him and demand of him to act as we need him to act for us. And we're not seeing how he's acting because we are so blind for our own needs as the Jews were when Christ was coming down into Jerusalem. We fail to see what God is doing 
we fail to grasp it. We cannot see. So then what is the Palm Sunday message? Is it Hosanna? Hosanna? Well, I think yes, in part it is. Look what God has done. Look what God is doing. Look how much more God needs to work through us. I think the message of Palm Sunday is a call. It's a call to you and I to surrender our will to God. That's a lifelong journey. Surrendering our will to God. Surrendering our life to God, that God's heart becomes our heart. There becomes an integration of God in us. That we will only one will, and that's God's will and not our will. Now we sing, Hosanna, save us, save us now. Save us from ourselves. For if we live for ourselves, we are a destructive people. Study the history of humankind. Just see how destructive, barbaric we can be. Yes, there is a beautiful side right now. In the countries bordering the Ukraine, oh, they've come out with real, tangible means of helping their neighbor. That is a grasp on reality of hope. The kindness that we have within us, the goodness that we have within us, the thoughtfulness that we have within us, the caring that we have within us for others who don't speak our language, for others who don't share some of our values or customs or traditions, who don't look like us, may not smell like us. And I mean that in the most kindly way. message of Palm Sunday is a clarion call to all of us to turn our hearts over so God may come into and become a part of us, each of us. So when I see you, I can also see God operating in your life and out of your life. There's been a merger. And I may not see it all the time. After all, you are only human. As am I. But I see it often enough so I can wave a palm branch and say, praise be to God, I see you in the life of Mary, and Tom, and John, and Alice. I see you. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles that come from them and their desire to forgive, to help, to nourish others. Their self-sacrifice with their time, with their energy, with their money whatever amount that may be. For those who hear this clarion call on Palm Sunday that God wants you to be his Jesus in this world. Now, not tomorrow, now. Then be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. For Easter is coming. Easter is 
coming. Easter is coming. That will fortify us, strengthen us, give us hope, determination, conviction, a stronger will, a stronger desire to be what God wants us to be. And without us, who? Easter is coming. Let all the bells ring. Let all the palm branches wave. Easter is coming. For you who want to surrender even more of your life, to give more of your self-will over to God and let God have his way with you, be of good cheer. Your Easter, your Easter is coming. Your Easter is coming. Rejoice. Amen. And let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, We thank you for Palm Sunday. It tugs on our hearts. I think no matter how much of our heart is given to you and how much isn't, it still tugs on our heart. Because we know that at this moment in time, Jesus not only realizes historically that in a short period of time, Jerusalem indeed the temple will be raised to the ground by the Romans. He foresees that. That seems to be a part of his tears. He also knows that uh, his uh, word at this point isn't enough to help change people and that he's going to have to give his life and that this next week is going to be a very difficult week for him. And in point of fact, on Monday, Thursday, he's going to pray, talk to you, pray that you remove this cup from him, the cup being the cross. And he struggles with that. Going back a number of times to his disciples and saying, can't you stay awake? I need you more than everything, anything to be awake during my great distress. I don't want to die. Certainly died this way. So we know that's before him in this next week. So Palm Sunday has many meanings for us. And the one we've heard this morning, to recommit ourselves even more diligently to becoming your true sons and your daughters. So thank you for this time, Father, that we can hear your word from the Holy Bible. And may it be so in our lives. In Christ's name, we would pray. Amen. And before our litany of praise, I would like to remind you that we have a Monday evening service here in the church. And you are all invited. And... Um, it helps to set us on our way to uh, fully click our heels in joy at the resurrection that is coming. So together, let us <coughs> arise, if you can, if you will, and let us read responsibly the litany of praise from Isaiah 40 and then the Lord's Prayer. Go up on a high mountain, shout with a loud voice, shout with fear and say to the towns, here is your God. Here is the Lord's coming with power. Nations are like a drop in a bucket. They count as nothing in emptiness. To whom could you liken God? Or what likeness compares with him? Have you not known? Have you not heard? 
The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He gives power to the faint. To him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with rings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. O oh, Father in heaven, enable us to walk and not faint, to find our strength in you for life. Enable us to make wise decisions. Help us to make correct decisions. And then, Father, where we have erred in our belief system, enable us to be humble enough to acknowledge it and to grow in wisdom and in stature as we develop our beliefs. Father, thank you for your never-ending love. We pray for those who are in need of it this day, this hour, those who are sick, those who are maimed, those who are diseased and lost, those who are lonely, those who are confused, those who are trapped. We pray for them. Enable us to help them as best we can. Show us how. And then the willingness to do so. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ in the prayer that you've always asked us to pray whenever we speak to you by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
for those of you for prayer, do come to the bas baptismal fount and pray with another. You're all welcome to a little fellowship hour afterwards. And as we go, let us go. This beautiful hymn that we just sang, the song in our hearts, and peace. That peace that comes from knowing God intimately. Go in that peace. Amen.
home, I, I usually do that and just sit there for hours. Yeah. 